to Iran now, where the country's so-called morality police have been stepping up their enforcement of laws mandating that women wear headscarves. Many Iranian women have been shunning the hijab head covering in the wake of last year's mass protests. Now, that unrest was sparked by the death of a woman accused of violating the official dress code. Now, with the one-year anniversary of that uprising approaching, authorities are keen to show that they are still very much in control. A video circulating on social media, apparently showing a plain clothes agent harassing an unveiled woman in Tehran. Then a day later, Iran's police spokesperson announced police patrols would be established across the country. These police officers will deal with those who unfortunately ignore the consequences of not wearing the proper hijab and insist on disobeying the norms. And in addition to warning them, if they disobey the orders of the police force, legal action will be taken and they will be referred to the judicial system. At least since 1990, police units enforcing mandatory hijab regulations have patrolled the streets of Iran. Then in 2022, an unprecedented women-led uprising. It began after that same police force arrested 22-year-old Gina Masa Amini, allegedly for not wearing a headscarf properly. She died in their custody. The uprising did not spark legal changes in the dress code, but many Iranian women have since been very visibly following their own rules. Um, I almost do not buy scarves and overcoats anymore. I have not worn the hijab for a long time. I have gone without it to places that are considered ordinary, but not being veiled there has made them feel special. It seems that the control over women's hijab has slipped from their hands and they are doing whatever it takes to uh, gain that power back. Iranian authorities are now not only aiming to regain that control with street agents. According to a fresh report by rights group Amnesty International, they're also increasingly resorting to surveillance technology in their crackdown. I received a warning text message once after removing my headscarf while driving. The second message stated that my car would be impounded systematically. When the second message arrived, my friend and I were in the car both without a hijab on a one-day trip. It was a terrifying thought as um, they could impound our car in an instant. In June, Iranian state media released this video. It shows women with uncovered hair being intimidated. But the video also claims that authorities gather biographical information on offenders by using face recognition technology. Officials have also said they've shut down tourist attractions, hotels, restaurants, and shopping centers for not enforcing the hijab on their female patrons. Some young people may continue to resist wearing the hijab, but older people uh, who rely on their salaries will be coerced into wearing headscarves again. With the one-year anniversary of Gina Masa Amini's death approaching in September, observers say Iranian women will likely be finding more ways to make their voices heard and to make sure they are seen. And that report was by DW special correspondent Aya Ibrahim and Aya joins me now in the studio for more. Um, Aya, we heard there some of the conversations that you had with uh, Iranian women. How worried are they about the morality police tightening its grip again? I think very worried. Um, you know, after we had seen these protests, these unprecedented protests in September uh, that, you know, largely took aim at the morality police. A lot of women had told me that there was a new sense of solidarity and safety on the streets of Iran because of, uh, you know, popular support was for women that were, uh, you know, just, you know, making a simple choice of how to dress. So one woman told me that, you know, nowadays, if uh, a morality police officer is approaching a woman uh, and telling her to cover her hair, people would sometimes gather and try to actually defend this woman. And so it's become on the streets increasingly harder for these agents, uh, you know, to enforce uh, the mandatory hijab. And there's a real sense of worry that, you know, after having 
to an extent, um, you know, pulled back from the streets. The morality police is now keen, uh, the so-called morality police is now keen to regain that control, perhaps because they feel that, you know, the world's attention uh, has has decreased from Iran. You know, this was a huge news story in September, well into December of last year. But uh, now with the protests sort of calming down, um, the women that I've spoken to are really worry that authorities are seeing as an, seeing this as an opportunity to come back perhaps even more viciously with new technology, even as, as we've seen uh, in that amnesty report. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about this new face identification technology that authorities in Iran are now uh, using. How, how effective is something like that? Well, officials themselves say that between, uh, I mean, since April of this year, 2023 till uh, now, so in a period of about four months, uh, over a million women have received text messages uh, after they were, uh, you know, seen not wearing the headscarf properly in their cars with a threat saying that their car could be confiscated. Uh, and so this tells you that there's a, you know, at least from, you know, according to the officials, there's a real attempt to, um, you know, scale this so that they maybe don't have to send so many of their agents into the streets to receive the kind of reactions that they've been receiving. And obviously, you know, from the state's behavior, we can see that they're really keen that people are scared, that, that they feel that they're always uh, being watched. And they did release that video on state media showing, uh, you know, how this happens. And it's the women that I've spoken to, they say, you know, um, they're, that the officials are really, um, you know, don't, don't want to get that backlash on the streets, but also from the international community. And so they're resorting to what, what one woman called to me, like, more subtle forms of violence and surveillance and feeling like you have no privacy. Psychological pressure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Feels like it's a very real threat to them now. So, so given that it is like that now, I mean, we, we, we know that the first uh, anniversary of the, the death of Gina Massa Amini is approaching. How likely do you think protests are um, to break out uh, to mark that anniversary? I mean, it's very difficult to, to really tell what's going to happen on the streets, you know, uh, during the anniversary. This was a very special set of factors that came together at that time, you know, the, the, the death of this woman that many women told me, you know, it could have been them. It could have been any, any one of them, Some a figure that many people could really, and many women especially, could relate to that protest movement then evolving into something about... Uh, into something that is so much more than the mandatory hijab, but then turn into these anti-government uh, uh, protests. Um, but then after that, there was a very brutal crackdown. The morality police is one of them, but we've also seen executions of uh, protesters. So it's very difficult to tell if there's going to be that kind of momentum again. However, the grievances that the people went out to the streets for, mm -hmm. whether that's freedom for women or economic freedom or political freedom, these are still very uh, real problems. And um, it remains to be seen how people choose to commemorate that very emotional time. DW Special Correspondent A.A. Ibrahim, thank you for that. Well, our coverage continues now with the German-Iranian journalist Gilda Sahebi. Gilda, it's good to have you with us. I know you've been covering this story extensively. What are people in Iran, what are they telling you about the crackdown on women violating Islamic dress code there? We just received a pretty good overview of what's going on. Basically, uh, the government, the regime is really doubling down and doing anything and everything to get women to wear the headscarf again and to follow the Islamic rules. Um, and they have been trying that for a long time, for months. They've been doing thing after thing and tightening all the rules and enforcing all the rules as much as they could. And still women have been resisting and they still have not subsided to what the regime wants. And so what we're seeing now is the very overall last attempt, basically, to get women to wear the headscarf. And it's it's not still not working the way they want the women to behave. And they are changing their approach to enforcing these laws, I understand. Um, video surveillance, for example, facial identification technology is being used now. Um, what do we know about that and, and how are people reacting to that? That is right. We also have reports now um, that it seems like even a German uh, company has been involved in this Bosch. Bosch, they're using their, it seems like they're even using German cameras to do their 
uh, human rights violations, basically. So I talked to a friend yesterday, and she said, we just heard, heard also that they're especially effective in cars, because you can, they scan the license plates, and then they, the women get text messages that they're going to have to give up their cars. And we know from reports of Amnesty International that in, since April, 2,000 cars have been impounded. So women, 2,000 women have had at least to give, give up their cars. And my friend told me that she, too, received a text message. And she said she's just ignoring it and just hopes that she can keep her car. She's just not going to give it to them. Mm. And uh, so it seems like that's what she told me, that more and more women are starting to wear the headscarves in the car mm -hmm. because it's just... Without a car, it's, it's just very, very difficult to get by in, in Iranian cities, and so they need their cars. Um, but in the streets, just as many women as before are not wearing their headscarf, and it's, it remains to be seen what's going to happen in the next couple of months. Is this tactic of fear and pressure of the regime going to work? Are women... Are more women going to stop not wearing the hijab, or are they, are they going to do what the regime wants them to do? Well, you know, where do you see this headed? Um, you know, we've got the, the first anniversary of the death of Gina Masa Amini. That's approaching. You know, that, that anniversary is next month. I mean, we've had upheaval in the country now for almost a year. Uh, and it seems, looking from the outside, that the women in Iran have a choice. They can either stay home stay out of the public sphere, or if they go into the public sphere, they have to wear a hijab or face a police force that can act with impunity. Is that how you see it? Yes, and it seems like that's what my friends have been telling me in Iran, that the controls and the pressure that we had, we have now, she says, is just the same that was before the death of Gina Masamini. And mm -hmm. that, for me, that's a clear sign that the regime ahead of this anniversary that will be on the 16th of September, they really want to make sure that they're back to the old ways. And from what I'm seeing, that uh, women especially are defying this. They go out. I mean, they have, you know, they have jobs. They go to university. They go to school. And they have to do that. They can't stay at home. And so they, it is really hard to say what's going to happen. Um, but the government, the regime, wants to stop this by the anniversary because they are afraid that there are going to be protests again. And I think yeah. it is likely that there will be protests because there's a lot of anger going around. Yeah, but we will certainly continue um, our reporting on it. We appreciate you joining us tonight, too, and sharing your reporting. Gilda Sahabi, thank you.